All right, I'd like to take you on a quick walkthrough of this Feastman CU3A Vito Crossel 300 and indirect water heater installation I just completed. <music> This is a Wiesman residential condensing stainless steel boiler. Uh, it's rather large, as you can see. It's about the size of maybe, a, you know, a single door refrigerator. It's big. Uh, it is 100% stainless steel, the heat exchanger in this boiler. It holds a lot of water. Um, 18, 19 gallons is the capacity of this thing. It's huge. Before it's filled with water, weighs 400 pounds. So you can imagine... Uh, given its size and its weight, it's a little <laughs> difficult to work with. But I'll tell you what, it is quite a boiler. Uh, my customers, the many customers now that I've installed this for have been extremely happy. So we're in an old house here built in the 50s. And um, it's got some ugly looking plumbing and wiring and everything like that. We, I did the best I could with what I had to work with. So what I removed was an old cast iron Wild McLean that was installed in the 90s. Uh, after the oil was removed from this house, oil uh, burning boiler. So a natural gas boiler was put in 1992. That boiler is what I tore out to replace. It had four zone pumps and we uh, changed everything quite a bit. So give you a rundown. So stainless steel boiler, uh, great, amazing piece of machinery. I'm, I'm just, I can't say enough about it. Next to it, that small white tank. So that's 40 gallon indirect water heater. Indirect, what that means is, is the boiler itself heats the water in directly in that tank. So there is no burner, there's no elements to warm that the water in that tank. What there is, is a one inch diameter stainless steel coil of tubing or a heat exchanger submersed inside that tank in the potable water. Inside of that heat exchanger tubing is hot boiler water. So hot, wa hot boiler water is circulated through that tank to heat it up and then we deliver hot water from that tank to the house. How we do that is through a thermostatic mixing valve. So what that means is I keep this tank set pretty darn high, 140 degrees, 145 degrees. And then I mix cold water in with the hot water coming out of the tank to get the set point we desire at the faucet. So my plumbing code says I have to give them 120 degree water. They could turn that up. This is adjustable. But what I do is I, I supply them with the proper operating you know, everything set up properly so they can have 120 degree and even warmer water than that if they desire. I use this Kalefi Angle Mix Valve. Uh, it's a personal preference. The reason why is it comes with a couple cool features like this temperature well right on the outlet, the press unions, and really the unions, these G type unions in the first place. So I can put any kind of piping connection on here. Uh, iron pipe thread, PEX A, PEX B. I can do uh, sweat. I can do obviously the press and I can do whatever I want, however I want. So I can buy the valve body itself and then add these on. Has That's actually how I do it. So um, anyway, that's enough about that. So we've got the boiler here, indirect water heater. We're delivering the properly uh, proper temp. And now we've got the boiler heating system. So out of the top here, uh, temperature pressure gauge that's included with this boiler. Uh, gas connections here. And then you've got a um, auto air vent and a pressure relief valve. This is a built-in tapping on the boiler itself. And you go along here. And here on this T is my pump and my supply to my indirect water heater. Keep going and we go right into the system pump. So this is a Taco 00E pump. It's actually a discontinued uh, circulator. It's been replaced with a 0034E, I believe, but this is an amazing pump uh, or circulator. I mean, I'm just going to call it a pump because that's what we kind of typically call it in the industry. But um, this circulator is pretty sweet. It's got a lot of different settings. It's on auto mode, so it's always constantly trying to balance itself out in the flow required in the system. The reason why this is a great fit for this system, it is a big circulator for um, for residential use but we've got a lot going on here four different zones of multiple different types of heat emitters so a lot of cast iron baseboard cast iron radiators some fan coil units and even some uh, copper fin tube so we go up into the manifold here distribution all everything connected to the old piping of course got some bent tubing um some a lot of press connections and just do what you can keep it as clean and serviceable as possible i like these webstone uh, isolation uh, valve kits those are my favorite uh, then we come back on the return side we've got 
Kalefi's own valves, and we've got a constant circulation, two loops on constant circulation here, as you see, this is the return now. And I don't have a zone valve on these two zones. And the reason why is because we want this boiler to run continuously on outdoor reset and constantly adjust its, deliver its temperature perfectly as, as per the load needed. So I'm doing that through the main level uh, zone here in, in order to just keep that main level constantly um, heated properly and never gonna overheat, never gonna underheat. Uh, there's constant circulation. Uh, based on the outdoor reset settings. Um, these zone valves, these have been, they're four wire zone valves. You can get them without the wires or with, obviously mine are with. Um, these are low voltage, 24 volt. Uh, they take up almost no uh, power, so 7 VA uh, on these things. So amazing for being able to stack a ton of them on a, on a transformer if needed. I do use those in conjunction with Kalefi's control. Uh, this is just like a Takeo relay. This is just made by Kalefi. Um, it's got some cool features built into it. The reason I use this zone valve is because it's been very reliable and it's got press union connections on it, which I really like. Uh, same type of unions that are on the mixing valve. But when you couple it with this relay, the two units together, the zone valve and the control, you get a five-year warranty on the two. So there's a, some incentive there. Um, nice control otherwise, but uh, moving on, we'll go around to the other side here. There is a condensate neutralizer there, so the condensate coming out of the, con the boiler goes through that filter. What that is, and that's made by Axiom Industries, there's a lot of condensation, condensate neutralizers out there. What this does though is it neutralizes the condensate coming out of the boiler, which is very acidic on the pH scale. And so it's gonna it's going to uh, bring it to an acceptable level where it's not going to eat away at like steel and cast iron plumbing. This house has cast iron plumbing, and this con the condensation coming out of this boiler would basically erode that to nothing right through the wall of the piping and the floor drain and everything, and we'd have problems here. So uh, we send it through a condensation neutralizer, which is uh, very useful on your condensing appliances. Over here. We've got your water feed valve. Uh, UPC does require me to use an RPZ. This is a dual check atmospheric vent backflow preventer. Uh, my, local, I, my local inspector accepts this on boiler systems and residential without uh, antifreeze. So this is perfectly acceptable by them. And you've got a auto feed uh, pressure reducing valve here made by Kalefi as well. And this is a uh, hydro node is the name of this bracket, but it's made by Axiom Industries, same company that does the uh, condensate neutralizer. Mount my expansion tank to it, connect it to the system there, water feed there. So uh, just try to keep it all nice, clean and, and neat and serviceable. It's the name of the game on this stuff, if you ask me. This particular boiler does come with a Wi-Fi connection. So this is the Wi-Fi control. Uh, it's connected to the boiler circuit board or control with a USB cable here. And this is a power cable. So you do need 120 volt power for this that is gonna plug into, so this is the transformer cable. Um, it's gonna plug into an outlet. So then moving on, um, you can see this gray vent pipe here. This is a plastic exhaust pipe. It's called polypropylene. That's the material that it's made out of. This particular brand is Central Therm, but there are other brands on the market. DuraVent will be one that you're going to find here in the U.S. as well. So this is uh, a plastic pipe engineered specifically for the exhaust of flue gases on a condensing uh, uh, appliance like a boiler or a furnace. You can see it's got a slip joint type of connection with a locking clip. Inside this rib right here is a sealed element or like a uh, uh, like a like some kind of neoprene seal or so, some type of uh, pliable material that makes the seal. And it's a uh, hub and spigot type of situation. The white pipe, that's PVC, Schedule 40, that's intake air um, going to the burner. So it's a two pipe direct vent. Um, uh, venting system for this boiler. So there you go. Uh, there is the Wiesman CU3A um, model residential stainless steel high mass boiler, the Vito Crossel 300, along with the Vita Cell 300 stainless steel indirect water heater. Hope this was uh, informational and thanks for following along.